Good morning, everyone. My name is Elena Burt, and I'm here at Epicon. We are in Nashville, Tennessee, um, and this event is put on by the Epilepsy Foundation of America. We're here at the Gaylord Opryland Hotel, so I'm super excited. Um, we're just about to go into the conference room and get started with some interviews. Uh, there are so many awesome resources here, and it's going to be epic. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Franklin, Regional Director with Epilepsy Foundation of America. We're so glad to be live from Epicon. She is just such an awesome friend of mine. Uh, but So tell me a little bit about what it was like setting up Epicon. This is actually in your territory, so I bet that's exciting. Yes, we're so excited to be here for Epicon in Nashville, Tennessee. And I know Elaine and I are both from Alabama, so just a short drive up here. But people with epilepsy and people that love people with epilepsy from across the nation flew in for a weekend long conference and after two years of virtual meetings, we love seeing people in the squares, but seeing people in actual real life, giving them hugs, people that have never met before in real life, but it's just been an amazing weekend to see our community and learn more and more about how to support people with epilepsy. I'm sure I've already met so many awesome people and I think getting to see this whole community rally together in person, like you said, I think it's been really cool. Um, and then you have your own epilepsy journey, so tell me a little bit about that. Yes, in 2018, I was diagnosed with epilepsy, had a convulsive seizure, followed by a bunch of focal impaired awareness seizures as a new mom. And seizures happened for several months, but thankfully I was able to get in with a specialist at UAB who was able to find a medicine combination to get those seizures under control. And no matter if you're a caregiver of someone with epilepsy or seizures strike in your own life, it turns your world upside down in a number of ways. And so my mission here with my job is just to encourage people along the journey and uh, help them aim for the lowest amount of seizures we can in their life. Right. That's so awesome. And what y'all are doing with the Epilepsy Foundation of America is doing here, um, it's just so awesome. And we're so glad that we were actually able to have this event in person. Well, um, and yeah. we thank you, Elena, for being an Epilepsy Awareness Ambassador because you have been one of the biggest advocates I've met, and I'm so thankful for that. Thank you, Ms. Sarah. <laughs> and tell me a little bit about just kind of your story and what you're doing here at Epicon. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I am from Seattle and I am at Epicon to really tell my story, dive into the storytelling uh, method of, you know, creative content. Um, and so I decided to write my own book and really wanted to share that with the epilepsy community. And I found that Epicon really just provided a good platform to be able to do that. So tell me a little bit about as a young person and writing behind, what was it like just kind of walking through that and writing really just your own memoir? Yeah, it was definitely, it was tough. It wasn't just sit down at the laptop and boom, it's done. I'm sure. <laughs> um, I, so, you know, I wish it was like that, but it's not. Um, it was really just kind of a compilation of journals that I had written as I had gone through my diagnosis, as I had experienced these different things in my life um, and a lot of the times it was just putting that together in a way that I felt represented my journey and what I wanted to support other people and who were going through a similar diagnosis um, especially at the time of life that I had um, I just got diagnosed my in my freshman year after my first semester so it was really hard to meet those college friends that you were supposed to be lifelong friends with and then you have to medically withdraw for a year so I definitely think that there's a lot of social aspects that were really hard and that leads to a lot of emotional you know difficulties so epilepsy just affects all parts of your life so right um so if we had a listener that say was just diagnosed with epilepsy what is one thing that if you could tell them one thing that you would tell them I would say that your story matters I would say that what you're feeling matters. I would say if you don't know what's happening, don't feel guilty about that. Um, really just let yourself feel what's going on um, and then just lean on the people around you. That's so awesome. I feel like that is kind of a glimpse of what your book was based <laughs> on what you've said about it. I feel like it's really awesome that you were able to put those feelings on paper and write your book. So tell us if there's a listener that wants to get access to your book, how they, how they can get to it. Yeah, absolutely. So you can just go to natalierobinsonbehind.com and you can grab a copy there. Awesome. Thanks so much, Natalie. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Hi, my name is Susanna Price. I was diagnosed with epilepsy 20 years ago now. 
So I have lived with it most of my adult life. But uh, along the way, I learned a little bit, a lot, about uh, endurance and being patient with myself, uh, hope, and I found strength I never knew I had, faith, I prayed, and I wrote, and I journaled, and ultimately my answer was a brain surgery. But I expressed uh, and shared my life lessons in this memoir that was published last year, and is called Seized and Driven, and it is available on Amazon Kindle or paperback, and now I love to share. I am no longer afraid to talk about it like I was initially. And I will talk and, t and share about it with anyone and everyone because there's so much that needs to be understood. And like I said, I've learned and I live with hope and I have a greater understanding and, and compassion for others. And that's been a huge life lesson for me too. So I'm very happy to be here and love sharing what I've learned. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you have here and what you're doing at Epicon. So I came to share my story, which is a story of hope and a journey of the trials and tribulations of living with epilepsy. I was diagnosed 20 years ago. And uh, four years ago now, I had a laser ablation. And that was my ultimate answer. But along the way, I learned a lot about myself and life and living with a chronic condition. And I had a lot to, to share. So I decided I needed to write it all down. That's so awesome. My cousin Charlie, she's five, and she was diagnosed with epilepsy when she was one. Mm -hmm. um, and they're actually here. So it's been really cool to see this mm -hmm. community rally around together. Mm -hmm. And it's awesome that you're here sharing your story and just kind of your journey. Mm -hmm. um, so do you have a way that our listeners can get in contact with you if they want to learn more about your story and just kind of your, um, your journey? Yes. So I'm on Facebook and Instagram, uh, like most of the, the free world. Yes. And then uh, my book is also available on Amazon, Kindle, and paperback. And I speak, and I will speak about it until the day I die, probably. So. Awesome. And what's the name of your book? It is called Seized and Driven, and this was published last year. And uh, like I said, it's a conglomeration of uh, lots of years of journaling and life lessons, not just about seizures, but right. uh, marriage and family. and Awesome. So if we have a listener that say their child just got diagnosed with epilepsy, if there's one thing you could tell them, what would you say? Oh, boy. So I didn't have it as a child. And now as a parent, I can only imagine. All I can say is we you are your own best advocate and if you have any doubt follow your gut because if that particular doctor or specialist doesn't have your answer that's not the end all be all there's somebody else there's another so the, the great thing about neurological conditions in general is that there's so much research being done right. so find the next one and the, who can help you because somebody can and we cannot ever ever stop fighting awesome you well you are awesome miss Susanna. thank you for talking to me of course <laughs> so happy to be i'm here with miss karen um she is the founder of the cute syndrome foundation i'm not the founder not the founder i'm a member of the executive member committee. um so tell me a little bit about just kind of what this foundation does so we provide support we help fund research uh, for scn 8a uh, it's a gene mutation. Um, a lot of our kids, most of our kids have epilepsy because of this gene mutation. So we're here to spread awareness about it and find more families that need support. Awesome. Have y'all had fun at Epicon? What's been your favorite part? I think just meeting everybody and finding new families, talking with people from the Epilepsy Foundation and, and sharing our story with everybody. That's awesome. So speaking of your story, I see we have a warrior over here. You said Miss Lily, right? It is. Okay, so tell me a little bit about her story. So Lily is 24 years old. Uh, she was diagnosed with SCN8A when she was 15. So it took a long time to get a diagnosis. SCN8A wasn't discovered till 2010. 
Um, and so, and then when whole exome testing came out, that's when we got a diagnosis. So how can, if we have any listeners that want to get in touch with y'all and maybe even learn about Lily's story, how can they get in touch with y'all? So we have a website, uh, thecutesyndrome.com, and um, feel free to check it out. And there's ways, if you have SCNA Day and want to join our Facebook support group, there is a way to join on our website. Um, we are always looking for more families. We're a small community, um, but we know there's a lot of kids out there, a lot of people out there. Awesome. Okay, and I got to close this out. We're in Nashville, Country Music City. Who is your favorite country music artist? I'm going to have to say Dolly Parton. We're from Knoxville, Classic. Tennessee, and she's in Sevierville, so. Classic. I love it. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Lynn Palmer. I'm a warrior of epilepsy, and I'm also a survivor of a suicide attempt. Please join me on my group, on my Facebook group, Epilepsy, Picking Up the Pieces. No, you are not alone. Neither am I. Let's do this together and fight the fight. Thank you. So tell me a little bit about what you're doing here at Epicon and just kind of what brought you here. Good morning. Um, I have had epilepsy for almost 15 years and my passion is advocacy and I was really excited to get back into actually coming to conventions and conferences again because it just feels so good to be around people that under truly understand what we go through and um, on a daily basis. Yeah, I think that's a huge part of what a difference this event is making, and it's just kind of bringing a community and saying, you're not alone, and we're here with you. Um, and we were talking earlier just a little bit about the ways that epilepsy has affected your life that maybe people wouldn't have necessarily thought of when they thought of how epilepsy could affect you. So tell me a little bit about just what the impact it's made in your life. Okay. Um, one of the biggest things is there is so much loss that happens with epilepsy. I was 33 years old for my first when my first seizure occurred. My daughter was three. I had a career in school social worker, school as a school social worker. It was my calling, and I did it for 11 and a half years. And um, it was in a small community, and they just became tired of me having seizures and not being able to drive. And um, they found a way to get rid of me. So I lost my job. I lost my ability to drive. Losing my income caused me to lose my house. On the day that I had to do a short sell on my house, my little Yorkie that was five pounds, she got ran over. So it just all toppled over and you eventually lose your friends that you know, get tired of picking you up out of the floor in restaurants and stores and off the beach, and it just goes on and on. And it's just an ongoing thing that seems to never go away. Um, I could talk forever, but I won't. <laughs> no, I'm sure. Well, that is just incredible. I think that a lot of people, when they think epilepsy, they don't see that side of it. You know, I think that I you are a prime example of, you know, getting, you've been able to pick yourself up out of that trench. And you talked a little bit to me about how you have your Facebook group that's kind of like a support group for other people with epilepsy. So tell them a little bit about that if we have any listeners that would maybe want to join your group. Thank you. I appreciate that. The name of the group is um, Epilepsy Picking Up the Pieces. It's a Facebook group, and it's not only just for people with epilepsy. It's also for families, um, caretakers um, as well, and, and also for individuals that are just genuinely interested in epilepsy. And what I focus on in that group is how it affects us, um, loss, anger, injustice, depression. I will s share with you, Elena, that I'm also a survivor of a suicide attempt because I just broke September 25th, which was the day before my daughter's 18th birthday. I broke on the day of her birthday party um, last September. And I never forgave myself for that. But it just became too much. And so advocacy for our mental health, because it's something that um, is often overlooked. Our doctors, our clinicians are not trained to deal with our mental health, um, is my passion. 
and uh, it's time, now is the time for someone to do something about it, and that's why I'm here. Wow, yeah, I'm going to give you a hug. You are incredible, Miss Lynn. It was awesome Thank talking you. to you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm here with the Danny Did Foundation with Katie and Lauren. Uh, so tell me a little bit, I know there's a long story behind Danny Did, so tell me a little bit about just kind of what the inspiration was. Absolutely. Um, Danny Did got started by Mike and Mary and Stanton. Um, we're all from Chicago. They live on the northwest side of the city, and they started this foundation after their son Danny passed away from SUDEP. And after Danny passed away, um, they found out about SUDEP. That was the first time they've heard that word, sudden unexpected death and epilepsy. Um, so the questions came up immediately. Why didn't we know about it? Could we have done something different? Um, could we have gotten a device in place? So they used those questions and started the Danny Did Foundation. Um, Danny Did comes from the last line in uh, Danny's obituary, go enjoy your life, Danny Did. So um, what we do here is raise awareness around SUDEP. We're encouraging doctors to have that conversation as hard as it may be with families, knowledge is power, right? So um, we're encouraging them to talk about it. And then once you learn about it, you can do things to come up with a really great seizure action plan, get a device in place, and um, hopefully that'll be a game changer for some families. So um, our other big program at Danny Did is that we um, help families Get devices in their home so if you're looking at a device you can reach out to danny did um we'll do what we can to help you we work with families and not companies so it's really about awesome. um, talking with families helping them and then help them with funding to get the device in their home we know that they can be expensive and we know that insurance isn't covering them um so we want to help them um it's not the silver bullet that we're all hoping for it's not the cure um but it's an extra layer of support um and Hopefully it's going to provide a little bit of peace um, to the family and uh, to the individual facing epilepsy. Absolutely. And what um, what are your some, some of your favorite events that y'all have done? I'm sure y'all have all kinds of events. And what has been some of y'all's major ones or ones that you really enjoyed? Yeah, so every year um, we have a Hearts and Hugs event. It's um, our largest event of the year. Um, it's a beautiful gala down on uh, in the city in Lake Michigan, on Lake Michigan. It's a beautiful night. We get to talk about Danny, tell his story, and then talk about the impact that his foundation is having um, on individuals and their families facing epilepsy. So that is a great one. Um, we have one coming up June 10th, um, our associate board's first event of the year. It's a comedy night. Um, oh, how fun is yeah, that? Yeah, uh, laughter is such a good medicine. So. Um, it's going to be great fun. Um, it's at the Piggery in Chicago. We awesome. have a great lineup. So that one's coming up. We're excited about that. Um, and then there's just really great people who are fundraising all the time, um, all year round, um, and just getting people involved and getting the word out. Um, awesome. Which is We um, also have an awareness campaign in several airports and there's big really? billboards. You see sweet Danny's face and he truly stops you in your tracks and you get to read about um, epilepsy and it is truly encouraged people to reach out to us uh look into epilepsy and what suit up is so um awesome. it's in chicago denver washington and there's one more do you remember i think it's austin oh gosh hopefully that's not wrong but <laughs> they're popping up everywhere and, and it's really wonderful to to just get the the word out that's so awesome and we'll kind of pass the mic but what has been y'all's kind of experience at epicon what's been y'all's favorite part so my favorite part is is getting to meet people and and chat about um, their experiences and and letting them know about Danny and and his story and how we're using that to um, help people facing epilepsy. So that's been my favorite part. Um, Lauren, go ahead. Yeah, um, it's been a really great experience. Um, I actually got to speak on the SUDEP panel. Awesome. Um, so that was really cool. Um, just to be able to hear other people's stories who were sitting in on this on the talk and then also get to meet the other panelists who are in on that panel um, and get to share a little bit more about the Danny Did Foundation. And then as someone living with epilepsy, getting to go to some of the other sessions and um, just hearing from all the experts, other people with the epilepsy and just kind of getting um, more, uh, you know, connected with other people in the epilepsy world because it can feel isolating. So it's nice to be around other people with epilepsy and kind of get to learn uh, what else is out there with support and everything. Right. 
And like you said, I think that this can be a very isolating thing. So that's what's so great about Epicon is that it's bringing this community together and it's saying you are not alone. Um, but so, okay, I got to ask, we are in the music city, the mu country music city capital. Yeah. So tell me what, what is your favorite music artist, song? Um, I'm a big Chris Stapleton fan. Love it. I love, love it. Chris Stapleton. We can listen to him all day long. So. Awesome. You got one or not big on country? I would have to actually say my first concert ever was Blake Shelton and Brad Paisley. Love it. Or, yeah, Blake. Love it. Yeah. That's awesome. Love I'm messing it. up. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank y'all for talking to me. This was awesome, and I love the Danny Did Foundation. Y'all are just so great. Much. Thank y'all. Thank you. I'm here with Dr. Shopa Reddy. So tell me a little bit about yourself, where y'all are based out of, and just kind of what you're doing here at Epicon. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, so my name is Shopa Reddy. I'm one of the pediatric epileptologists at Vanderbilt Children's Hospital here in Nashville. Um, so what I do is I treat a lot of kids with epilepsy, seizure disorders, um, and help them kind of find the right treatment. Awesome. So what does that look like, kind of having a patient come in day one, just kind of going through that journey? What does that look like for you and for the patient? So the first thing I want to do is kind of establish what brings them to see me, what kind of seizures they're having, how often they're having them. And then we decide what kind of treatment and workup that we want to do from there. Um, a lot of times it will depend on what type of epilepsy they have. Um, and a lot of times it also depends on kind of the family and the patient and what they're looking for, what their goals are. So I try to establish that pretty early on so we can have a right. good relationship moving forward. Awesome. So what has been your favorite part about Epicon? We're in this massive hotel and there's yeah. all these new people. So what has been your favorite part? Honestly, I'm just blown away by the people's questions, people's journeys and stories. Um, I get a lot of that, you know, being in clinic and getting to meet families and kids with epilepsy. But the volume and like the amount of passion that's in this room is just mind blowing. So I totally incredible. agree. My cousin Charlie was diagnosed with epilepsy when she was one and she's five. And so kind of our whole family is here to support oh, her. Great. But it's really cool just to see this community kind of rally around yeah. together. Yeah. Um, so if you had a patient that came in, they just got diagnosed with epilepsy and you could tell them and their family one thing, what would you tell them? I would tell them that they're not alone. And there's no end of the line. We are all in this journey together, and there's always resources and people that can help you through the journey. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking to thank me. You. Nice meeting you. Thanks. Um, and she's with Children's of Alabama. I actually live in Birmingham, so real close. Uh, but tell me a little bit about what you guys are doing here at Epicon. Well, we are here, uh, myself and our epilepsy nurse, representing uh, the epilepsy program at Children's of Alabama and UAB School of Medicine. Um, I'm one of the pediatric epileptologists there, so I take care of all kinds of children and young adults with epilepsy, and we're just here trying to um, support EpiCon and um, uh, all the sort of patients, advocates, caregivers who are here. Um, it's been really fun. That's awesome. My cousin Charlie, she was diagnosed when she was one, and she's now five. I don't know if you've seen her around, but yes, I know Charlie. Yes, they're here, and Children's has just worked wonders in her life as well. So I know they're super grateful for y'all. Um, but so tell me, just kind of, what does your day-to-day -day life look like at Children's? Oh gosh, it's kind um, of probably a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, every day is so different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I uh, kind of alternate between seeing patients in the clinic, uh, seeing patients in the hospital, in the epilepsy monitoring unit. Um, and reading EEGs, so kind of the whole the whole spectrum. Awesome, and I gotta ask, what has been your favorite part about this hotel? We were talking down uh, there earlier, and this is such a massive hotel, so what has been your favorite part? It is, um, uh, I think just feeling like you're in a rainforest. Um, I just realized this morning when I took my stuff to the car that I had not been actually outside this whole week. It weekend, feels like it. But I felt like I've been outside because you're in this, you know, rainforest with the skylights and everything. Right. So Yeah. So if we have a listener that say their child was just diagnosed with epilepsy, if you could tell them one thing, what would you tell them? Um, I would say you're not alone. This is very scary uh, sort of um, journey to embark on, but uh, there are a lot of resources and people to support you and help you. Um, so ask for help and, um, you know, listen to your neurologist. <laughs> um, but, and seriously, take your problems to your neurologist because there's so many resources that we can point you to. Um, you're not alone. There's a whole community of people going through what you are. Right, and I think that's what's so great about this event yes. is it's doing just that.
Hey y'all, it's Elena, and I'm closing out here today in Epicon. We are just about to head out, but I just wanted to say thank you to the Epilepsy Foundation of America. Thank you to Epicon uh, for putting this event on. It has made such a difference, and really just bringing the epilepsy community together and giving these people the sense that, you know, you are not alone and you have a community behind you. Um, it has really just been so special. Thank you to Alabama Care for giving me the opportunity to really shed light on these organizations that are making a difference in the epilepsy community. So this is me signing off from Epicon 2022. Uh, so have a great day.